Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's take another look at a slightly different type of second order linear differential equation that's homogeneous with constant coefficients. Now, just a reminder, let's go back to the simple version here. We have y double prime plus y equals zero, and then we'll also start looking at y double prime plus a constant times y equals zero. Well, just a moment before we get there, let's go back to what we know so far. We've already discovered that the general solution to this can be y equals the sine of x, because if we take the first derivative of that, we get the cosine of x. We take the second derivative of that, we get minus the sine of x. If we now plug in minus the sine of x for y double prime and sine of x for y, we should, it, we should get zero. So let's try that. So minus the sine of x plus y, which is the sine of x. And of course, you can see that that equals zero. And likewise, we can also say that y equals the cosine of x is a solution because if we take the first derivative, we get minus the sine of x. Take the second derivative, we get minus the cosine of x. If we plug those in, we get minus the cosine of x plus the cosine of x, and of course that is equal to zero. So both of those indicate that these are indeed solutions to the initial differential equation. Now, from the fundamental, fundamental theorem, we also know that if y equals the sine of x is a solution, we can then multiply that by a constant, and it's still a solution to the differential equation. Also, here, we, since the y equals the cosine of x is a solution, we can then say that y equals b times the cosine of x is also a solution. And finally, with the fundamental theorem, we can then say that if a sine of x is a solution and b cosine of x is a solution, we can simply add those two and that will then also be a solution to the original differential equation. So this here would be another general form of the solution to this original differential equation. Now sometimes the second term, the y term, does have a constant in it. Now the question is how do we deal with it when there's a constant there? Now this is a very handy thing to know and to remember because there's all kinds of applications where that is needed. But quite often those applications include a constant in front of the y that is other than one. So how do we deal with that? Well, we can then say that one possible solution is that y is equal to the sine of the square root of that constant c times x. Let's see if that is correct. So let's take the first derivative and we get y is equal to the derivative of sine is the cosine, the cosine of the square root of c times x, times the derivative of the angle, and so that would be times the square root of c. With other words, this is equal to the square root of c times the cosine of the square root of c times x. Now if we take the second derivative, oh, this should be y prime, if we take the second derivative of y double prime, this would be equal to the square root of c times, of course, the derivative of the cosine is the negative sine, so minus the sine of the square root of c times x times the derivative of the angle, which is the square root of c, which means that y double prime is equal to this times this times the minus of the minus c times the sine of the square root of c times x. Now let's go ahead and plug in this and this into the original differential equation and see what we get. So we plug in this right here, we get minus c times the sine of the square root of c times x plus c times y is equal to this, which is the sine times the square root of c times x. And is that indeed equal to zero? And by inspection, you can see that yes, this is a negative of this. When you add them together, you get zero. So therefore, we just verified that is that that is the solution or one of the solutions to the differential equation. Of course, if the sine of the square root of c times x works, I can bet that this would also work, that y equals the cosine of the square root of c times x. And again, if we take the derivative, we get y prime is equal to the square root of c times the negative sine of the square root of c times x. And if we take the second derivative, we get equal, we get minus c times the cosine of the square root of c times x. And then again, if we add this and we add this together, we plug that in here, what do we get? We get minus c times the cosine times the square root of the square root of c times x plus c times y, which is the cosine of the square root of c times x. And is that equal to zero? And sure enough, by inspection again, we realize that's equal to zero. So therefore, this is also a solution 
to this particular differential equation. And then again, using the same concept with the fundamental theorem, we can multiply each of these solutions by a constant, then we can add them together. So finally, the general solution to that would be y is equal to a times the sine of the square root of c times x plus b times the cosine times the square root of c times x. And that would then be the general solution of this format of that equation. And yes, there are some nice applications by realizing that if you have this as a differential equation, this would then be the general solution to that. And that's how we do that.